tonight a very special television event. Okay, it's time. <laughs> You'll go inside the delivery room to witness the joy of having a baby. Be there with actress Mary Lou Henner and experience the excitement as it happens. Hi, I'm Mary Lou Henner, and I'm just putting my son Nicky down for a nap. He's only a year old, but guess what? I'm pregnant again. <laughs> Well, this is my husband, Rob Lieberman, and for the next six months, we're inviting you to share with us all the stages of my pregnancy. You're also going to see some familiar faces and learn how they handle the challenge of being a new parent. And at the end of the show, you're even going to be in the delivery room with Rob and me. Yikes. <laughs> so please, stay with us, because we're having a baby. Well, we're about to have a consultation with the doctor, which is very exciting because it's the ultrasound where we may even be able to find out if we're having a boy or a girl. But before we do that, let's look in on another new mom, Mary Lou Retton. Boy. Yes. It's been 12 years since she captured our hearts for her gutsy performance in the 1984 Olympics. And still a recent Associated Press national poll named Mary Lou Retton the most popular athlete in America. Mary Lou and her husband, Shannon Kelly, live in Houston, where Mary Lou has pursued a career as sportscaster and actress. But these days, Mary Lou's competitive spirit is applied to her latest challenge, bringing a brand new baby into the world. I wanted to be pregnant so bad that I was feeling the, you know, the feeling the symptoms of, of being pregnant. She <laughs> took the pregnancy test, and uh, I was asleep, and uh, she I was came. up early that morning, because yeah. I knew that, that was the day, you know? And she came in and she said, was it, it's, it's blue. But it was a, a plus. It had a plus sign. I looked at her and I said, oh man, <laughs> that's wonderful. I come up here quite a bit and the nursery, it, it's, it's pretty much done. We just hung the, the drapery and the, the bedding is done and the painting is all done. And now someone had said to me, uh, one of my dear friends said, all you have to do now is fill it. <laughs> so the job is left for me. But man, a woman goes through a lot. And uh, I'll tell you, men get a heck of a bargain. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> really do. do. I mean, it's, it's amazing to see all the changes that, that go on in a woman's body. <laughs> there is nothing cute Beautiful. about being pregnant, that's what I say. And that's one thing that I really tried to make an effort in doing, is to always let her know how beautiful that she oh, is. And, he was wonderful. And it's the most dynamic thing that a person can do in life is, is be pregnant and give life. It's scary. I'm scared to death. I'm anxious. I'm so yeah, curious as to what as to what this little little guy or girl is gonna look like. I mean, if I look and look at these little, <laughs> these are so sweet. It was really really hard the first three months because not only are you tired because you're pregnant and all the hormonal changes. I mean, it's that sleepy tired where you just be driving in a car and you pull up to the stoplight and you could fall asleep. But I was also traveling and and doing my speeches in airplanes and airports and hotels and it was it was that was the hardest part for me the second trimester was great i and i read i was reading and reading all my pregnancy books it says some women um, get the burst of energy in the second trimester and i was hoping that i would and i did it felt great obviously i'm not doing gymnastics anymore that <laughs> that would be ridiculous. 45 minutes on a bike has really helped me out. And I think it's it's kept my weight down also. I gained a bunch of weight. <laughs> yeah, we'll get into that later. He is going through sympathetic pregnancy. And, and I, that is true. Oh. I mean, it, at least it's, it's, it's you affected are a me. documented case, honey. Yeah, you really are. No question are. about it. If it's a little girl, we're going to name her Shayla Ray. And then if it's a boy, I think that my name, Shannon Kelly, I, I love the Irish heritage sound behind it. But uh, I like the name, and I'd like to have a, a junior if I could. I think you want a boy first, don't you? Oh, I mean, I think that... Um, 
See, he thinks, he thinks that I know what the sex of this baby is, and I really don't. But it just seems <laughs> funny, though, that all the colors seem to be blue. If you look at the crib, the crib is mainly blue. If you look at the, the cover on the little changing <laughs> thing, it's blue. If you look at the colors in the rocker, there's blue. And there's pink. There's blue. And there's, there's pink. Blue. And there's and look pink. At the, look at the sky up here. Look at the ceiling. Well, what, what color, color is, that? is the what, sky? What color is that? Blue. The sky is blue. Bathroom blue. I told Dr. Shaw that we don't want to know the sex right, of this well, baby. He, I told him three times. I'm just and you won't be able to tell, well, really? no, I know. I'm excited about the ultrasound, and we have waited for nine months to be surprised. And the baby And I'm going to be looking like no, this? No, you're not. Well, if you do, then you, you're not going to tell me. Well, the first me. time we went in and we saw the ultrasound, I, I just knew it was a boy. And then the nurse told me that that was the umbilical cord. <laughs> and then for a second, I was going, that's my son! <laughs> oh. What's that? <laughs> Not every time you I just ask a question. Look at, look at you. Come on, Shannon. Nine okay, months okay, we okay, have okay, waited. Okay. Kill me. I'm so glad that I have uh, Dr. Samuels as my doctor. I wanted someone young, and I want a doctor that I can grow with and someone that's going to be there. And, and that knows your body. Exactly. I mean, Shannon and I both feel so comfortable with her, we can ask her any question that's possible. Has she dropped? Is it... Well, I don't see it on the ground yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> I see myself having an epidural. I really do. I have high anxiety about labor. I don't know what to expect. And my sister has been very truthful with me. And she's like, it's like no pain you've ever felt before. It, it kills, it's this and that. The epidural is a, a, like a little IV, like a little catheter. And it goes in through your back and it keeps you numb from your belly button down. I'm not going into the birthing process thinking I'm superwoman, thinking I can do this completely natural. I think modern medicine has come a long way and that a woman can have medication and can have some painkiller. You don't have killing. to suffer. Right. You, know, there's, you don't have Without to. hurting the baby. You're totally awake. You're with it. You know what's going on, mm -hmm. uh, but you just don't feel the pain. So I'm going to say epidural, please. <laughs> Oh gosh. Oh, it moved. <laughs> I've heard that there is a, a euphoric feeling that a man has when he looks down and sees his baby. My mother's always told me, she said, you, you think you love your wife, and you do, no question about it. You think you love your parents, and you do. But you don't know what love is until you look at those two little eyes that are Hello. looking up to you and that are totally dependent on everything that you do in life. She said, then you'll know what real love is all about. Wow, that's strong. We did build this house uh, with children in mind, that's for sure. We wanted to fill it with running little screaming <laughs> boys and girls. And they say that you're always blessed with the kind of child that you were. And I, and <laughs> oh, I, no! I really hope that, I, that we're not. <laughs> we have energy between us, that's for sure. A little bit. Uh, I was a hyper child, I must say. Three weeks later, a beautiful baby girl was born to Mary Lou and Shannon. Shayla Ray Kelly weighed in at six pounds, three ounces, and was 19 and three quarter inches long. <laughs> Congratulations. There we go. Oh, yeah. You're about 14 weeks, huh? Uh-huh. Unlike Mary Lou and Shannon, Rob and I what wanted to know the sex of our baby. See that right there? It that's looks like a boy. That's really the right shape. <laughs> yeah, I think Do you think so? Yeah, you think that's a boy? Like a boy. Yeah, that's look at there. Unless it falls off, it's a boy. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's what it is. One of the things I felt about the delivery the first time was that I was about to take on this incredible athletic feat. And it was the feeling of preparing for something like the Olympics or uh, a marathon or whatever. And I felt like I had to be in great shape and I had to be in, in great health. Now I feel like it's gonna come a little faster because they always say that your second one's a little bit faster. But I know what to expect. You know, I know what pushing is going to feel like. I know what the communication between us is going to be like. All righty. Okay. Wave goodbye. Bye-bye, baby. It's waving bye. to you. <laughs> yeah. So long, Joey. Joey. Oh, my dad would be so happy. Yeah, that's going to be great. Lauren, so I'm going to hang on to you. Yeah. I got one of the first calls because I'm Joey's godfather, so I got here very quickly. And the first thing I heard when I walked in the door was, the water broke. So I knew things were going to happen quickly. Well, you broke your water. It's going to be fast. Well, I'm in my 25th week now, and of course, I've started to show. Nikki and I have been all over the country working 
and racking up frequent flyer miles. Well, today we're in New York for personal appearances. <laughs> what a great opportunity to show Nikki the Big Apple. Right, mister? Well, when I think of New York, I think of shopping. And I know Nikki doesn't seem thrilled with the idea, but I know a place that'll wake him up. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> you want to sit up here? Ooh. <laughs> okay, get ready. Get ready. Ooh, look at that big bear. I think Nikki is getting the idea that there's something else going on. Oh! Okay, let's find something for the baby. He's getting the concept okay. that there's a baby and that he's a big boy. And he points to my stomach now and he says, baby, baby. Yeah. Oh, this is a ladybug. And what's that? And what's that? Oh, the, oh you. You know this one. Oh, I think no, that uh, siblings and oh. first children get their like cues from the parents. And our idea is to bring this baby into our family, which includes Nikki. We're all welcoming this baby into our family. Yeah. It's a challenge to combine a busy career with being a parent. Let's take a look at how Anita Baker handles. With sales of more than 13 million records and years of winning major awards, Anita Baker is recognized as a true pop diva. But behind all this glamour, there are painful memories of being abandoned by her own mother. Today, Anita and her husband, Walter Bridgeforth, have two children whom they raise in their lakefront home just outside of Detroit. And Anita, who's been called by music critics the queen of passion, is most passionate about those two little boys. Before I was expectant with Edward, I used to watch little Walter play, and it, it looked very lonely to me. I'm like, geez, man, I wish he had somebody to play with. Mom, Mom. Mom, Mom. Mom, Mom. When Eddie was first born, the transition wasn't so difficult for my oldest boy, Walter, because we um, had this little baby doll, and we had the crib already, and as my tummy got bigger and bigger, you know, we explained to him that, you know, another baby is coming and you got to get ready. So we had him take that little baby and give the baby a bottle and put the baby night night. And so he kind of got a little familiar with what was going to happen. He had no idea this kid was going to come and wear his pajamas. That he's not happy about. Let's put the baby easy, easy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Walter has always been a reasonable child. Pick you up? Yeah. What's the magic word? Please. Huh? Please. What? Please. Whoa, okay, Please. okay. Little Eddie is a caveman. You cannot reason with him. He has his own agenda. Let's go swing. No, you want to stay with the berries? What is going on with these berries and bushes? There are those who say that little Walter is like his father. And there are those who say that little Eddie is like his mother. I have been known to have my own agenda from time to time. And that may be true, I don't know. My oldest boy, Walter, does hear me on the radio uh, quite a bit. And he usually will just, you know, bounce up and down in his mommy. This is a musical house, and we can't help it. Uh, that was one of the first things that I was able to share with them. Even in the hospital, you know, I could sing to them. Not like I sing to them in the house. Anita's energy level is very high, and always has been from the day that I met her. It's that way from the time she gets up in the morning until uh, shortly before it's time to go to bed. There's a big difference having two children as opposed to one. You know, you got two car seats, you know, you got two sets of clothes, you got, you know, two lunch boxes because they have to have their own. At the end of the day, we're exhausted. Whereas before, we may have had a little bit of energy left, but, but we enjoy it. It's a good fatigue and, and we wouldn't change it for anything in the world. The importance of 
family to me is that I really never had one. My mom didn't raise me, my aunt raised me, and um, you know, I have, I have no malice for, for my, my mother, my birth mother. I, you know, I understand a lot now about children, and she was very, very young, you know, when she had me. So the children have also helped me to understand. You guys don't look like you get ready to go sleep. It gives me a sense of future. It gives me a sense of, uh, of belonging. As far as I can tell, black males are like almost an endangered species, you know, and we have a, a, a really tough job ahead of us. We want to make sure that they're seeing and hearing the proper things, and if they're not, we try to be around to explain the right way versus the wrong way. Oh, yeah. All right. There's nothing like watching your husband feed his children or just, I mean, I could be looking at him put their clothes on or change their diaper. And there's a different type of love that floods me and fills me that I, I'd never known. Now I'm in week 29, and I'm on the set of Civil. Well, more than that, I'm in the show Civil. I just want you to answer one question. Jeez, you got big. <laughs> well, anyway, Sybil was on my show. She said, will you come on my show? And I said, sure. So here I am. And I said, but you're going to have to write my character pregnant. So sure enough, they did. And they made me the second ex-wife of Tom Wopat. Sybil was married to him first, and somehow I managed to uh, save his sperm. I guess it's okay to say sperm on a show like this. All these years, and now I'm having his baby. Look, you have nothing to say about what I do with my life. Except when you're doing it with my sperm. How'd you get it anyway? I'm sure curious. <laughs> ah. While I'm waiting for my next scene, let's look in on a first-time father, the president's brother, Roger Clinton. Roger Clinton wants to be known as much more than Bill's little brother. He's working very hard on his career as a singer-musician. Roger has gone from paying his dues during the 70s and 80s in the club circuit around Arkansas to singing before a packed Madison Square Garden at the Democratic National Convention. Along the way, he's learned to overcome a past filled with physical abuse at the hands of a violent alcoholic stepfather by dreaming a dream and seeing it through. Today, that dream includes his wife, Molly, and their son, Tyler. Now, you know what? You know what we need to do? I need for you to sit right here like a big little man and let daddy put your shoes and socks on. And Roger really yeah, is a great father and it's really great to see Roger with Tyler because they look so much alike and he's not afraid to change diapers <laughs> and he gets da, up with them. <laughs> this is the updated southern version of the rocking horse. This is a rocking hog. His, his uncle, Bill, sent him this, attached uh, a note to it saying, uh, just wanted my nephew to understand exactly where his roots are. Oh, you wow. breathe, breathe just like I am. Being in labor for me wasn't as um, bad as you hear some of the stories. It was very smooth for me. It was very natural. The first little sign of any pain, Molly says, epidural. Everyone was teasing Roger. Oh, he's going to freak out. He's not, he's going to, you know, is he going to forget everything you learned in the mosque? Right. But he really, I mean, was very calm and really helped me. I we met did our, the challenge. We met the challenge. The doctor said that he didn't know who cried more, the father or the, or the son. As soon as the baby was born, the first person I called was my brother. There wasn't anyone else for me to call first, you know. I mean, we grew up basically without a dad most of our lives. Uh, the father we had was a severely violent alcoholic. He didn't get what he wanted as a little boy, so he wants to make sure Tyler gets it. I cannot do enough for my son. The rest of my life is devoted to being the best father, the best husband, and the best father that I can ever, ever be. Hi, big brother. <laughs> Chelsea and Hillary. The last two Christmases have been really special. Uh, needless to say, the White House is not baby safe. The word no me. is, you know, used quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 not, no, not no, that, no, not Tyler, that, Tyler. Don't touch that. <laughs> No, Theodore, that's Theodore's. <laughs> Don't touch it. That's Abe's. Put it down. 
I think one of our favorite things to remember was the first time that we went in to the Oval Office. Big Brother gave him his pen that he signs all of the documents with. Sat him in his chair. Let Tyler sign in a couple of laws. <laughs> uh, and there was a that, that button you always hear about. He let Tyler push it a little bit. He deactivated the button so nothing would happen. <laughs> Tyler got to push that proverbial button a couple of times. Hillary is a is a great aunt. She does the goo goo ga ga stuff, you know, when he was real little, she did that. It's funny, they used to call and they'd say, how's Roger, how's Molly, how's yeah. your dog? Now they don't even ask about right. us, it's how's Tyler? I'm like, right. fine, and you? <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, now get in your car, sit down and shut the door. I tell you, since we've had Tyler, everything has changed, both of us work, uh, and that has been tough in itself having to plan two work schedules around a 20-month-old's life schedule, which always fluctuates. Let's go on down to the ocean and see some birds, okay? You gonna split that cookie with Daddy? It's just nonstop. Sometimes he'll stay up till midnight. Sometimes he'll go down at eight o'clock. And we have to really adjust our schedules around him. Every day he can move and get into something he couldn't yesterday. We've gone from the phase of don't let him out of your sight to don't let him out of your reach. And right when you think, I've had it, this is it, he'll run up to you, and then you just go, it's all worth yeah. it. Son, where are the fish? That's right. In the months that we've had, Tyler, I've looked back over things and compared and contrasted my life. I would sit there and question, you know, how did I deserve this? It's the greatest thing that's, that's ever happened to me. And uh, it's just simply the greatest gift that a person could ever receive. I walked in the delivery room and I, I looked at Mary Lou and I could tell this was it. She was going to give birth any moment. And next to the birth of my children, seeing Joey born was one of the most amazing moments in my life. Breathe. Take some breaths. Remember. Deep breaths. That's, oh, that's Water Boy. <laughs> water Boy. <laughs> Well, it's important to stay in shape and to eat well when you're pregnant. I mean, what better time to eat well? And after you're pregnant, I know a lot of us, that's right, that's mommy's button. A lot of us feel like, you know, I can't wait to get my body back. And you can imagine how important it is for someone like supermodel Kim Alexis. Whoa, where's Nikki's belly button? <laughs> We know Kim Alexis is one of America's leading supermodels, featured on over 500 magazine covers and five Sports Illustrated swimsuit issues. But as Kim pursues her career, including her own series, Your Mind and Body, she also deals with the challenges of a blended family. Married to retired hockey star Ron Duguay, the couple each brought two children from their first marriages into the relationship. But now with the addition of one-year-old Noah, Kim must play the role of both supermodel and supermom. Ron and I fell in love first and were dating long distance, so our children didn't really get to meet. One was his girls were on the West Coast, my boys were on the East Coast. The real test before he even thought of asking me to marry him, I think, was uh, seeing if our children got together and um, liked each other. And that was, it was really pretty easy right away. It's like the older two, Amber and Jamie, would team up together, and the younger two, the skunks, Shay and Bobby, would team up together. And it seemed to always work. It was different when Ron and I had our own child. The boys and the girls saw that this was all their brother, and it made them more connected, I think, as a family. Well, let her get close now, honey. It's her turn next, okay? And they all feel responsible for that baby, and they love that baby and protect him. And I think it's helped them watching me be pregnant and, you know, fat. Shay said to me one time, you're really fat. And I was like, honey, I'm pregnant. No. Noah is a year and a half, and I think we call him our funny baby. He's just always happy and always making us laugh in some way or another. He was so strong in my womb, and I kept saying to Ron, this is like different. This baby's like really, really strong. He's hurting me. He used to hurt when he'd kick. Sure enough, he popped out, and he's been like the big, strong boy, and it sometimes even hurts the boys and makes them cry. <laughs> I don't know, he's just Mr. Super, super Popeye boy. Yeah. This baby does everything. He's got his own roller skates with his little helmet, and he uses his small little hockey stick, and he hits the tennis ball, and then he'll go over to the tee ball and put a ball on top, and he'll hit that. 
was a lefty, by the way, already. We knew that at a year, that he's a lefty. Plus running around the house from one room to another, chasing the right. kids. So. Ready, set, go! Yeah, no aerobics for this baby. No. He's doing it all already. Then we take him to the pool. The first time I took him in the swimming pool, he would see the bigger boys, his brothers, and he pushed my hands off like, if they're swimming, I can do it. And so I had to get him a little yellow ring that's like a bathing suit inside. To get your figure back after a baby, for me, has been very difficult. I'd be fine as a normal, everyday housewife, but I'm not perfect in my business. It does alter your figure, and it alters your life, obviously, but it's worth the price, I think, to have those babies. Push your socks. We don't have a live-in nanny. We really want to be with our children and raise our own children. We wanted to put our children to bed. We wanted to bathe them. We wanted to do the homework, and that's the way it's been with our family. Right now, we're having to raise these kids and, and do their homework and all those things. And doing the homework is probably the toughest part. I know. When people say, you know, we have five children, they're all under 11, it's like, wow. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Okay, hey, just wait. Can I have some water? Yeah, just, just wait. wait. You don't realize how much patience you really need to have kids. And that uh, I didn't realize I had that much patience. But uh, I think what helped in my case is that I retired from hockey, so I was at home a lot. So I got to get closer to the kids. He's almost like a mom because he's with the children so much and he's got oh, such heavy, a good tie-in with them. He knows what they're thinking, he knows what they're doing, he knows what their needs are, and he's always there for them. He always puts them first, unless there's a hockey game, then sometimes he has to watch the hockey game. Okay, go Bobby, push it out of skate. Go, go, go. I enjoy doing athletic type things because I've been an athlete all my life and I'm like a little kid. It's what I enjoy doing the most. And I think it's a good special time that he spends with my sons where he can take them and coach them in hockey. And Jamie, you got to move quicker. Move the puck quicker. Skate. Move it quick. These guys are pretty good. They're catching you. It's his special time with them that I can't ever replace. With five kids, they all demand a lot of attention. And the more kids you have, the less attention some of the kids get. So that's what crosses my mind when I think about having another child. Is it really fair to the others? Because I see what all the attention Noah's getting now, and the other ones may not get as much. And so, and it's, I see it, that too, and I know that too. But we just look at that little baby that we had. I mean, all of them are special, but since he's still a baby, he's precious. And you think, wouldn't it be cute to just have one? Let's just try one more combination. And <laughs> oh no! I know. When I walked into the delivery room, I realized that Mary Lou's labor was progressing really rapidly. I realized at that time that um, there was no way that she was going to get her epidural and in fact that her own doctor, Dr. George Weinberger, was not going to be able to make the delivery. At that point, I was just hoping that I'd be able to put my gown and gloves on as quickly as possible and catch this baby. Mary Lou, you have to kind of decide. I think we're going to have to push and have babies right there. We're having a baby. We'll continue in a moment, here on APC. Well, I'm in the end of my 39th week. One week to go. Nobody tells you it's really 10 months instead of 9 months. Come on, Nick. Can we start our class today? Can we clap our hands, everybody? Let's... Hi, hi, how do you do? Welcome to my... I'm sure this will be the last time I'll be with Nikki at his gym class before Joey is born. Do a forward roll. Ready? One, two, three. Yeah! Good job! Where'd you go? And he's off! Nicholas, you want to jump on? Hold on to the bar. Hold on. It's Nikki's turn. No, he doesn't want to. Does want to do well, as you can see, class completely wore Nikki out. As a mom, you've got to be ready for plan B. Well, a couple weeks ago, I had the opportunity to talk to another pregnant friend of mine, Annie Potts. And if you've ever wondered what it's like when two pregnant girlfriends get together, watch this. Wow. Annie Potts has shown many different personalities to the American public, from the daffy secretary of Ghostbusters to the vivacious Southern belle of designing women, and recently, the winning voice of Little Bo Peep in Toy Story. What do you say I get someone else? to watch the sheep tonight. Annie combines a natural flair for comedy with the warmth of her Kentucky roots. As a mom of two boys, ages 16 and 3, she now faces the new arrival of boy number 3 any day now. Men have it so easy, don't they? Don't you love it when guys say, oh, let's have like four or five of these because it's so, it's so yeah. great to have so many kids. 
It's like my mother said, I said, you know, Jim's going to be in with me. She said, well, I hope he's more help than your father was. I said, well, what did Daddy do? She said, the whole time I was in labor, he just sat in the corner of the room reading Field and Stream, and every <laughs> once in a while, he'd look over the top and say, you know, it's going to get worse before it gets better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what was, what was really great for me is I had my, uh, my son with me, too, who was 11 at the time, because he has a different father than this baby, we didn't want him to feel at any point that there was going to be some kind of new triangle that he wasn't going to be a part of in any way. So from, the, from when I first got pregnant, he came in and was there for ultrasounds and things. So it was natural that we should do that, and my doctor supported it. So he was actually in the, in the labor room. He was so gentle, and I think it was enormously helpful for his growth as a human mm -hmm. being because it is the ultimate experience. And to be able to know what that is at 11, to see oh your God, mother I chills. Yeah. do that and to know, I mean, I thought surely he must then see how his own birth must have been. It looks like a, a Nicky scored having give, given up his room. Yeah, that also he loves morning. animals. You know, which is why we did the, the border. It seemed just a little bit more grown up. Oh, and that's, up. that's we're going to have to get another one for Joey. Oh, that's what I'm naming my son, Joseph. Joseph Marlin Lieberman. What did, what did you decide? Did you have um, a name? Yes, we have. We, his name is Isaac Harris, and we're going to call him Harry. I like Harris. And so you just, but you're not going to call him Isaac? No, we're not. We're going to confuse everybody. So why don't you just call him Harris Isaac? That doesn't sound as good. That's why. Yeah. I know it's confusing. Isaac but Harris. our other I'm son sure. is named James Powell, and um, we were calling him Jake because my husband's name is, is James. Mm -hmm. and uh, But he didn't speak till he was like two and a half, and the first thing he told us was that his name wasn't Jake, that his name was Doc. <laughs> so he's Doc. So he's Doc all the time? So we, we don't know. We're going to call this one Harry and, and then let him make up, up his mind later. Hey, Harry. He's talking. What's he saying? Hi, Doc. So we have Bubba, Doc, and number three at our house. Bubba is your older boy's name? Well, the little one named the older one Bubba. So, <laughs> I mean, it sounds like something out of deliverance over at our house. <laughs> yes. Let's go outside yeah, and uh, do, I, I got you some good muffins. Oh, good. good healthy, you know, good. maternity muffins. You got a chair for me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> waddle, waddle. Don't you find that as a pregnant woman, your body is suddenly public property? Yes. And there's something sweet about it, but... There is, you know, it bothered me with my first pregnancy, mm -hmm. and I don't know, uh, maybe age mellowed me somehow, but it's like the little old women in the grocery store who come up and just transfixed have to touch you. And I decided that it was really good for the baby, because mm -hmm. people, I mean, that's all love, you know, they just... And don't you find that men just love pregnant women? Yeah. <laughs> they do. <laughs> Men, I mean, mm -hmm. you would think as a pregnant woman that, that you know, or, or maybe a, a fear is before you get pregnant, like, oh, I'm not going to be sexy anymore, mm -hmm. or I'm, you know, it's going to be a turn off or something. And men seem to love pregnant women. Well, it's, it's clear that you're the kind of girl who does fool around. Yes, that's true. <laughs> you know, there's no question about it. Right. How do you feel about having another boy? <laughs> I think it's God's great grace to me, actually, mm -hmm. to have all these boys to hold me up for the last half of my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what they do. That's what they do. Everybody says, oh, be so glad that you're oh. having boys because they love their moms. I, I, lo I, I love girls. I love women. But I'm really glad to be having another boy. See, I am too. I mean, I, I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. I mean, I, you know, I, I would probably feel differently no. if I... I know girl. so many people go, oh, what are you having? It's a girl. Tell me it's a girl. I go, well, it's not. It's another boy. And they go, oh. Be like, oh, what? Yeah, like they feel bad for yeah. you or something. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, well, good. you know, Dr. Anton, the nutritionist that mm -hmm. I was telling you about a few months ago, and you guys think you even went to see yes. him. He has this theory that whichever person is more sexually aggressive the night or the morning the child is conceived, you get the opposite. I'm so. thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody told me once that if, if, if we could see what those people who are gifted and have visions see, that when a, a new baby comes into the house, that literally the house fills with pink clouds. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, that's the feeling. When you go into somebody's house that has just had a baby or you bring your baby home, you really 
feel, you know, you think, God, why is it so light and nice here? And why does, why is you everybody go around smiling? Going, it <laughs> smells so good here, and it, it, it's those pink clouds. Yeah. This past Christmas, Annie Potts and her husband Jim received a very special present. Isaac Harris Heyman was born on December 27, 1995. We send them all our best wishes. Well, I went to my doctor yesterday and he said that I was already two centimeters dilated. So it's any day now. The next time you see me, I'll be in labor. Don't go away. The first thing out of Mary Lou's mouth was, there's no time for an epidural. Push, baby, push, 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 push. Ladies and gentlemen, delightful talk show host and award-winning actress, Mary Lou Henner. Hi there. Can you tell I'm pregnant? Yes, I'm due this week. In fact, uh, if I'm not careful, this could end up looking like a Gallagher concert. <laughs> Lauren, so I'm going to hang on to you. Yeah. Good luck. Don't drive like a maniac, okay? I'll drive like a maniac. What do you want me to do? I'm going to lean on you. Okay. This is your godson. Well, you, you broke your water. It's going to be fast. I can't believe I was just a comic relief. Like, well, this is you know, it's funny relief. going up the... <laughs> going up those stairs to get back on stage, I felt a wicked contraction, but I thought, oh, it's just because my shoes are tight. And I feel so bad I woke Mickey. Oh, well, he's in for a rude awakening, Annie. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Round up the usual suspects. Tell Marianne she's going to win the pool. Is she at the 12th? She She's right, we're on our way to the hospital. But you guys don't have to come. This is coming fast. I mean, I was just at HBO at Comic Relief a couple hours ago. I know. I kept saying the baby's going to be born on a Sunday. I just knew it was a Sunday baby. <laughs> oh, Sunday's child, that's right. <laughs> Sunday's child. Full of grace. My dad was Sunday's child. I'm Wednesday, full of woe. This is our religious, pious baby. I'd say my boys are exactly 18 months apart. To the, to the day. Oh, there were some funny bits tonight. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. They had us tribute to Steve Allen show with uh, Louis Nye and... Uh, okay, okay, it's time. Okay. They're less than two minutes oh, apart. That's definitely... Mm. Mm. I bet you this baby's born with the next two hours. Mm. The water's broken. Yeah, I'm calling someone who hangs around. Thank you. Nicholas. So as soon as you can, I need you to take your clothes off and you get into a gown. Joseph. Come on, Joseph. So, George's on his way? Yeah. Yes. Here he comes. Okay. 
we, is this a pushing or um, should blow us away? Tell me what whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to do. What do you want to do? If you want to push, push the baby out, Dr. No, Benny will it. catch it. Mm -hmm. And if you want to try and wait, mm -hmm. you can still blow it away. Whatever mm -hmm. you want to do. Does it seem slow? Is it or it's okay? No, it slows What you'll notice, Mary Lou, is every once in a while, especially when you're having a big contraction, the heartbeat will slow down just for a tiny bit, mm -hmm. as long as the contraction will last, and that's very normal. Yeah, Susie. Come on, yeah. Come on, Hi. Here. No time for an epidural, nothing. No, you're kidding. He's, He's on his way. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Mary Lou, you have, to, you have to kind of decide. I think we're going to have to push now. The baby's right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, okay. Watch, okay wait. All right. Yeah. On the next contraction, we'll push. Huh. You're doing great, Mayor. You are doing great. Take some, push, okay. breathe. Take some breaths. Take some breaths. Deep breaths. Deep Take cleansing breath. 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 Mm -hmm. Really okay. deep breaths, sweetie. And the next time you feel contraction, we're going to sit up. We're going to do some pushing. Okay, hon? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, ready? Okay, here we go. And wait, 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 wait. Tell me, tell me. Wait, wait, wait. Push me. Okay. Take okay. a breath. And push, push. And push. hold it and push. Take your breath. Hold it, take, hold a, deep, take a deep breath and push. Come on, push, 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 push. Come on. More, 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 more. And blow it out. Blow it all out. Blow it up, Another one. Push. And push. Good. Come on, push, 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 push. Come on. Push, 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 push. Push, 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 push. He's looking at He's trying to move his head around. Here comes Joey. Here comes. Let it out. Take a deep breath, breath in. Take a deep breath in. And take a deep breath in. No, don't whip no. the air out. There you go. Hold right the air in. Good, Mary. Do you want me to tell you what color his hair is? Just blow it away. 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 Here's his face, Mary. Here's his face. Do you want to see his face? Here's his face. There you go. Go around that way, Mary. Mary Lou, push. Mary Lou, push. And push, baby. Push, 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 push. Oh, Mary. Push, here he comes. Here he is. At the moment of birth, at one point, it all comes together and you instantly understand why you were put here on this planet. There's kind of a oneness with everything. You realize that instinctively, that's what we were put here to do, is to reproduce. I can't attest for anything else we do in this life, but that's yeah. one thing you know for sure yeah. we were put here to do. I have always found that through both pregnancies that I have felt really powerful. It's this incredible thing that women get to do. I mean, we are very, very lucky, and I think I would be extremely jealous if we weren't the ones who got to do this. I feel really strong. Rob always says you can make music, you can make movies, but until you make people, you really aren't in touch with, with what we're doing here. Joey. 
Here's Joey. What do you want to show him? You want to show him something? Eba, Eba, Eba. Your mouth. In your mouth. Eye. Yeah. Come over I. here, Nick. Nick, show it to Joey. Perfect. Perfect. Can he see it? Ah, uh, thank you. You have to teach him how to say thank you. to be swaddled the first couple days because they are so used to being in the womb like that. Okay. Welcome to your new home. Well, we'd like you to officially meet the newest member of our family, Joseph Marlon Lieberman. It's been quite a show, <laughs> nine months in the making. A big thank you to Kim Alexis, Anita Baker, Roger Clinton, Annie Potts, and Mary Lou Retton for letting us take such an intimate look at their families. On behalf of Rob and Nikki and little Joey here, I'd like to thank you for being part of one of the most dramatic, emotional, and unforgettable times of our lives. Good night, everybody. <laughs>